July 2009. In East Anglia, the UK's largest cooperative cereal store, Camgrain, is opening its £16 million advanced processing centre. Camgrain's wheat makes the flour for Sainsbury's in-store bakeries, so the supermarket's chief executive is cutting the ribbon. It's an example of a well-oiled supply chain, albeit one critically dependent on transport logistics. For any farm business, for any business involved in the supply chain, making sure your logistics are running as efficiently as they possibly can be is a huge issue for cost, which you'll have to reflect in the cost of your products. And of course, increasingly, we're understanding it's a huge issue for the environment as well. A big part of the success of supermarkets in the UK has been the fine-tuning of logistics with manufacturers that supply into them. But where a lot of the opportunity lies in the future is much closer to the farm gate. And people know that a lot of inefficiencies still exist, moving product from a lot of farms through to the consumer. And the opportunity is to actually approach the supply chain in a different way and take cost out of it and add value. How can we move this grain from the farm to the end user more efficiently? Project Marlin is an industry-wide consultation attempting to do just that. So called because Marlin are sleek, efficient and powerful. Like the perfect supply chain, the project is being managed by English farming and food partnerships. The first thing is just understand the supply chain that you're operating in from the retailer right through to the farm. The second is a collaborative approach. It's just amazing what can be achieved if people just sit around the table, discuss the issues and think of what the solutions might be. Three weeks after the Camgrain launch, in a Hampshire conference centre, a cross-section of the industry gathers together. It's a very traditional industry with very little change over the years. And unfortunately, it's a sad indictment on an industry, but we've actually accepted inefficiency wastes within the supply chain. And those costs are built in, mainly through the haulage rates. It costs about £40 an hour to operate one of the big Arctics that are carrying grain. As a business, we alone are handling about seven, 800 loads a day. So that's excess of £30,000 a day that we can see being wasted just in our world. The problem is a combination of delays, loading at the farm and at the mill, brewery or mallster. At Rankovis's Solent Mills in Southampton, hauliers get a two-hour group window in which to turn up. If several arrive at once, they have to wait before starting their journey through the intake process. And you're sort of spending two to three hours a day at least doing nothing, sat around. Delays at either the farm or during intake can cause vehicles to miss their next delivery slot. A vehicle out of slot at the start of a week may still be out of slot come Friday, creating considerable collateral damage to the schedule. The odour of being here today is to try and get together with the mill and the farmers to try and realise how we can cut out some of this lost time. There's a great interest for all parties, all stakeholders to be involved in that. I think that really does motivate everybody in the right direction. As well as rank Hovis, DHL is also a Project Marlin stakeholder. The logistics specialist organises a national distribution service for the Miller's flour and more recently has taken on cereal logistics, running the control tower of grain merchant Openfield. We do supply chain modelling and execution in every industry, whether it's automotive, the technology industry, and it's applying those skills and techniques into the food industry. So with access to rank Hovis Mills, the analytical expertise of DHL and the logistics operation it runs for Openfield. The workshop is planning a radical solution to these problems in the form of a major field trial. For two days in October, Project Marlin will completely reorganise delivery into Solent Mills. If we really want to look for best practice, as we always try to do on these sorts of things, what do we have to do? What do we need to set up? More contact with the farmers, so the farmers will know exactly when the lorries are arriving, so they're going to be ready and you'll have a time slot at the mill, arrive on your time, and hopefully, if it goes right, you won't have 10, 15 lorries in front of you waiting to tip. The benefit to the mill, to hauliers, in terms of being able to carry additional loads over the week will be enormous. Around the table, arrangements for the pilot are being finalised. Everybody seems to have a common objective, and that is to collaborate and make this work. Whether it's practical remains to be seen. But there's nonetheless a real opportunity here to set a benchmark for the entire industry. We have another six or seven mills. What we learn from this particular project, I want to pass forward onto all other mills. 
Rankovis do need applauding for being willing to get involved in this with their experience, our experience and EFFP's contribution. It will be a very successful two days. I think it should be quite exciting really, if, if grain logistics could be exciting. Any marlin off the Southampton coastline normally share the Solent with the city's more waterborne freight industry. But we're at Rank Hovis to watch road haulage. Over the two-day trial, 88 loads of open field grain and 10 imported loads will arrive on site. With a huge amount of pre-planning with Openfield and its farmers and hauliers, these deliveries have been scheduled not into the usual two-hour windows, but into 10 or 15 minute slots. The mill's intake process hasn't been altered in any other way. What we're looking for are the vehicles to turn up on time in a nice sequence so they can go through the weighbridge onto the sample point and then round to be discharged into the pits. A couple of prior measurements at the mill clock the on-site processing of deliveries at an average of well over two hours. The trial's narrow windows are scheduled around achieving a cycle time of one hour. So we're just looking not to hit that because it's a perfect world, but to be able to get as close to it as we can. Deliveries are underway and all vehicle movements are being carefully recorded. But day one isn't going according to plan. It's been a bit difficult, it's a bit bottlenecked and it's not quite, shall we say, as smooth as we'd want it to be. As in all mills, every load of grain that arrives on site undergoes laboratory analysis. The process from the lorry pulling underneath the probe to the finished results will take about 20 to 25 minutes. Unfortunately, the weather is atrocious and the probe that collects the samples has broken down. The sampler does tend to fill up with water and just doesn't want to work. Ideally, it needs to be covered over. And that probably slowed us up by a good hour to start with. But it happens. The delay already looks like it'll wipe out any speed gains Project Marlin's tighter intake scheduling might have demonstrated. <laughs> it's early days. <laughs> Ian Hart is one victim of the hiatus. He's finally making his second delivery of the day. Due to delays with my first load, I missed my second time slot by three quarters an hour. You had a backup of lorries waiting to be sampled, and then when they got sampled to come round here, you had a backup of lorries waiting for results. Before they go on and tear. Elsewhere, the weather has taken a rather more serious toll. An accident on the M3, which a lot of our vehicles were held up behind. We've had one who's been sat behind traffic for an hour and a half. The narrow delivery windows are both the strength and weakness of the new system. If you turn up early, there's no impact to anybody other than the haulier itself, because you'll be made to wait for a slot time. If you turn up late, then you do have an effect, because you're trying to fit into a sequence system where there is no gap and it will create a bottleneck in a queue, essentially. That one occasion where you're late will affect other hauliers as well. Today, thankfully, the mill isn't being too strict with its stragglers. We've had a couple that's been running late, but we've had a couple that's run early, so we just swapped to about a bit, but it's worked fine. By lunchtime, things aren't looking quite so bad. Yesterday, we had a steady day on the old system, but having said that, we seem to have caught up quite well today. We're probably one and a half vehicles behind where we were at this time yesterday. They haven't done too bad considering the weather conditions. Slowly it becomes clear that despite the morning's problems, the intake traffic is indeed flowing faster. Lorries coming in onto site, straight onto the bridge where before with the old system they were hanging about waiting around the back here to come onto the bridge. It has speeded up the process. For driver Chris Brider, there are considerably fewer vehicles than usual on site. It's quite surprised to come round the back and see nothing there. I've come in and got round this far without having to wait too long. It means get in and get out and go and get something else. Chris was given the 10 to 12 slot. Somewhere down the line this was misheard as a usual two hour window. 10 o'clock to 12 o'clock. Luckily he's on time anyway. I heard some tests was going on but I didn't know if it was a test on the grain or what it was. The old farmer just said there's a test going on I didn't know what it was all about. <laughs> Despite early evidence of time gains though, there's a feeling day one hasn't proved that much of anything. People within the industry, hauliers and especially Rank Hovis and EFFP, by you all being here and filming what's going on, will have definitely learned some lessons from today. Hopefully tomorrow, if things go better tomorrow, we'll be in a better position to judge whether it's a better system or not.
day two of the trial. The weather's still intermittently awful, but at least the sampling probe is holding up. For Chris Bryder, today's instructions were crystal clear. My boss man told me to be here at 8 o'clock this morning. I had plenty of time, so I went and loaded up last night. Had a bit of a lay in this morning. <laughs> Once again, the process has been quicker than usual for him. Every time I've been, I've had to wait, but yesterday I went straight through, today I've gone straight through. It was an hour and a half yesterday I was here, but before I know I've been here three, maybe four hours. By the afternoon, it's clear the gains in speed are substantial. First view of yesterday's data is that there has been an improvement, even with a breakdown. We were expecting it not to be an improvement, but it was, so that was good. But today was uh, a lot better. We had no breakdowns today, no issues. We had bad weather, and that should have affected us, but it hasn't. And we've seen a much greater improvement, more like what we expected it to be. Feedback from hauliers continues to be positive. 50 trucks have come in and 50 trucks have gone. When they can tip within an hour and 10, even 50 minutes at some stage yesterday, has to be a huge bonus. That said, keeping to time has been a challenge. Today, two drivers arrived a full three hours ahead of their scheduled slots. I know we've had a couple that probably were too early this morning. It's very difficult to arrive in a designated slot without a lot of planning, and a lot of planning has gone in to getting them here on time. Indeed, Rank Hovis was willing to attempt this trial because of the coordination underpinning it. The mill needed a steady supply of grain, whether or not the new system worked out. But perhaps this has made experimental conditions too easy. The wheat was prepared and vehicles were in the right place continually. There wasn't the delays that we would normally have by a vehicle being trapped at a farm because there's always some sort of delays on the farm. Drive down some narrow little country lane, wait for the farmer to finish his breakfast and his cup of tea before he'll load you. The emphasis must go back onto the farmer to a certain extent. He is providing the wheat for the mill. So if he wants to get rid of it, then he has to be responsible enough to meet that slot and to actually get his wheat on the vehicle to make his sale. The awareness of what each element of the chain requires in terms of information and knowledge is much greater now than it was. And people should hopefully understand that better now and take that more into consideration when thinking about what they're doing and planning what they're doing. Even before a full analysis, it's clear by the end of day two, the trial has a lot to teach the entire supply chain. I think it'll make it better. You're not hanging around for two or three hours. It means I get more done in a day. It means I earn more money. I spend less on fuel if it's done more efficiently. The drivers don't use all their hours up. So anything like that is a huge benefit. It could be very effective. Certainly I think it could be better for us. We know roughly what grades of wheat we're getting in so we can plan a little bit ahead. In fact, this is one unexpected feature of the new system. Rank's intake team asked for the wheat grades to be listed on the delivery schedule. And so, they were. I think generally it's gone really well. Certainly from Rankovis we will look at the national side of things and also look to extend hours if necessary. So I've got a meeting later on this month actually with my bosses to go through that and see what we can do with this analysis to help us make uh, more strategic decisions on wheat intake generally. Next step, so to take the data, provide some conclusions. Everybody has an understanding that this industry needs to improve and hopefully people will pick up what we've done and try to take this template and implement it elsewhere. Openfield's Logistics Control Tower in Grantham, Lincolnshire. A week after the Project Marlin trial, industry stakeholders gather again to hear how victory was snatched from the jaws of an unpromising start. Day one on the Tuesday, Duncan rang me and it was kind of, Jim, <laughs> it's going wrong. Kind of <laughs> However, even with those problems, by the time we got to sort of lunchtime of that day, that backlog had cleared through. The great thing was that it did work. Lorries were coming in every quarter of an hour. And because they weren't waiting around, they just simply travelled through the site a lot quicker. The turnaround was a lot quicker. On day one, even with those problems in the morning, Vehicles were getting through the site 11% faster than usual. On day two, it was a remarkable 41% faster. It equates to... It's nearly it's a 40 different, minutes. It nearly, yes. Nearly 40 minutes, 40 per, minutes. per time you go there. Mm -hmm. So if you go there three times a day, that's fantastic. a couple of hours saving. What does that mean in money? Saving terms, that's, that's nice. getting into about, theoretically, 25 to £30 pounds per load. 
So a significant amount of money then. Mm -hmm. It's beaten my best expectation. It's exactly what we wanted to see. It is a pilot, but even if we just prudently take half that value, that is still a very, very significant saving across the industry. Let's say, in reality, we should be targeting a 20% saving. £100,000 a day, of that order, 150. Yeah, across the industry. Millers have been collecting data for a long time about performances, and we've always been struck that performances don't change very much. They sort of oscillate depending on the nature of the year and the harvest. They look to be very significant improvements, and that's got to be good. Farmers are increasingly realising that we are now exposed to world grain markets, and not just what happens in the UK or even in your own region or your own county. We have to compete. We have to make ourselves better at the job we do. Capturing value is what they're increasingly becoming about. With its funding coming to an end, Project Marlin is officially winding up. The final job is to work out how the lessons can be passed on. And we've got one or two ideas how we're going to do that. We're going to disseminate through the film that we're making now. We're going to put some best practice guides together. We may look to put some sort of body together. There is no silver bullet and every mill has a different set of issues. But if we can get the right people sat around a table talking about the specific issues at that mill, a significant difference can be made. And it doesn't mean major capital investment. It just took small changes in the way that people did things to unlock potentially a great deal of value.